All right, this is the fifth video in unit six. And in this, I wanna talk, I just wanna start by talking about graphs of cosecant and secant. And graphing these is quite easy once you get the hang of um, the graphs of sine and um, cosine. So below, hopefully, if you look at this graph here, you recognize that this is the graph of y equals sine of x. And remember, y equals cosecant of x is the reciprocal of sine. So if I think of at 0, the reciprocal of 0 would be undefined. So if I think, of, and what is, let's think about what that actually means. So if we were thinking of, let me get my pen going here. So y, so as... So if we think of, or another way to think about this is cosecant of x, um, remember in terms of the definition in terms of x, y, and r, cosecant of x is uh, r over y. And so as we're getting close to zero, the um, as y value is getting close to zero, then the this fraction r over y is going to explode either towards positive or negative infinity. So if we're going towards zero from the positive side, we're gonna to explode towards infinity. And if we go towards zero from the negative side, we're gonna to go towards negative infinity. So if you think back to our rational functions unit, what does that mean is gonna happen at y equals um, zero? There's gonna be a vertical asymptote. So we're gonna have wherever sine zero, the cosecant graph is gonna have a vertical asymptote. So I'm gonna put vertical asymptotes. And then let's think about other crucial parts of this graph. Well, if I remember for pi over two, sine of pi over two is one. Well, the reciprocal of one is one. And what about on either side there? Well, the reciprocal, for example, that we know that sine of pi over six is a half, and the reciprocal of that will be two. As we get these tiny, tinier values, the, um, the reciprocal of that will be quite big. So we're going to have a graph looking like this. Going, remember, at vertical asymptotes, a graph either goes towards positive or negative infinity. And then, same will be true here. The reciprocal of three pi over two is negative one. Uh, the, sorry, the sine of three pi over two is negative one. The reciprocal of negative one is negative one. And we're gonna have a similar looking, except going down here. And then, so the graph will take on this look. And if we remember back when we spoke about the ranges of trig functions, we said that the rain, uh, range of cosecant of x was negative infinity to negative one, one to infinity, inclusive of negative one and one. And that, that can be shown here. Okay, so there is, so let's, let's talk about how we can define the domain of cosecant of x. So domain, it's all reals except where it's undefined and it's undefined at, so this corresponds to zero. It's then undefined again at pi, two pi, three pi, and so on. And I could say negative pi, negative two pi. So it's, it's undefined where y is zero, so along the x-axis. So I would say all reals except every k pi, so where k is contained in the set of integers. And the range, as we just spoke about, is negative infinity to negative one union one to infinity. Okay, so let's, um, let's now do a similar um, basic graph for secant of x. So here is the cosine function. And just like we did with, um, with cosecant, we're going to where cosine is zero, secant's gonna be undefined. So where it's hitting this x-axis here, I'm gonna put my asymptotes. And so as you might expect, the graph is going to look extremely similar to cosecant of x, like sine and cosine relate by a phase shifts 
Same is true with cosecant and secant. So I've got, I'm just gonna quickly draw this and then we can talk about the domain of range here. All right, so remember that cos uh, secant of an angle is equal to R over X. So it's gonna be undefined where X is zero. So we can think like, um, if we think about our unit circle in, um, in the quadrants along that um, Y axis. So <laughs> we're going to write, so let me just write there, pi over two, it's undefined, three pi over two, and then we've got five pi over two, this is negative pi over two, negative three pi over two. So the domain is gonna be all reals, except, so notice it's, it is pi apart where they're undefined, but in order to get all those odd multiples of uh, pi over two, I'm gonna say all reals except every pi over two plus k pi. And again, k contained in the set of integers. And the range is the exact same as the range of uh, cosecant, negative infinity to negative one, union one to infinity. Okay, so let's just do a couple of these um, domain range and period of each graph. Oh, I should go back into, uh, and just state that just like sine and cosine, the period of secant and cosecant uh, is 2 pi. This is, of course, just the standard secant of x and cosecant of x graph. Of course, when we do <laughs> transformations, there could be a period change. But okay, so let's go through some of these problems um, in four. Maybe I'll go through, let's see, B, C, and D. Okay, so B. All right, first thing, um, let's talk about the period. The period is going to be 2 pi over that B value, which is 1 third here. So the period's gonna be 6 pi in this case. And then when we, um, for the domain, well, there has been a, transfer, a domain um, transformation. So to figure out what the new domain is, I'm gonna set the inside of that cosecant equal to where uh, normally cosecant of x would be undefined, which we found to be um, every k pi. So solving for x here, I've got one third x equals pi over five plus k pi, and dividing by a third or multiplying by three, I get uh, three pi over five plus three k pi. So that is telling me now where it's undefined. So my domain would be all reals, except every uh, three pi over five plus three k pi. Now, in terms of the range, well, coming out of this cosecant, I know is the typical, the range negative infinity to negative one, union one to infinity. So following the order of operations, all I have to do is multiply that by negative four. So the range will be negative infinity to negative four, union four to infinity. Okay, let's do D before I get to C, because D is similar to B. D is, um, except we're doing secant. So um, for the dome, uh, actually, let's do the period first. Period is gonna be two pi over three fourths, or eight, uh, eight pi over three. And then for the domain, I there is a domain transformation. So I'm gonna set it equal to what where normally the secant uh, function would be undefined, pi over two plus k pi. And we're gonna solve for x. So three fourths x equals, if I add pi over six and pi over two, I'm gonna get, um, let's see, what are we getting? Uh, three, four pi over six or two pi over three plus k pi and multiply by four thirds. And I'm gonna get eight pi over nine plus four k pi over three. So eight pi over nine plus four thirds k pi. So I'm gonna say the domain is all reals except every eight pi over nine 
plus 4 thirds k pi. And the range, so again, following the order of operations means I'm going to multiply the normal range by 2. So that would give me negative infinity, negative 2, union 2 to infinity. And then I'm going to add 1 to that because the graph is going to, first it's going to get that vertical stretch and then shift it up 1. So it'll be negative infinity to negative 1 union 3 to infinity. Okay. So this, um, this one here, um, so again, it's, this is the notation we use with that little two there, but it means, this means I'm taking the cosine of one third X minus pi over four, and I'm squaring the ratio. That's what that means. Okay, well, yes, there's a domain transformation, but what does that mean? If the domain is negative infinity to infinity, the normal domain, shifting it and compressing it or stretching it is not gonna affect that. So the domain continues to be all reals. The range and period though are gonna be different because instead of normally, um, so coming out of this, I should say, negative one to one is the ratio. But if we're squaring it, what's the lowest coming out of that then? The lowest is going to be zero and the highest is going to be one. So the range is zero to one. Not only that, the period is also going to change. So normally, if I wasn't taking into account this squared business, I'd say the period is 2 pi divided by 1 thirds, or 6 pi. But think of what's happening here. Instead of cosine, um, you know, like sine, this won't be, this isn't exactly the graph here, but I just want to make a point. Um, so this is just a normal cosine of x graph. Well, instead of dipping below now, there's going to, everything, every negative ratio is now going to be positive. So it's gonna more have a look of all positives here. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means the period no longer is gonna be, um, in this case, six pi. It's now gonna be half of that because it won't have that under. It won't have above and below a midline. It'll just be <laughs> all above, so to speak. So the period is only going to be three pi then. So the period equals a half of six pi or three pi. So that's a little tricky to think about, but just be careful of what is thinking about, you know, that squared piece, it squaring the ratios impacts the range. How does it impact the range? And then does impacting the range um, also affect how often it repeats itself or the period? All right, so um, let's go through one graph and then let's maybe do the um, name that graph because it's good to practice those. So if you don't want to go through those, um, you can feel free to log off here, but I want to go through graphing. Uh, maybe I'll go through number seven uh, on, wait, do I want to do seven or do I? No, you know what? I'm going to do, I'm going to do eight and um, a cosecant graph. And then I'll do nine, name that graph. Okay. Okay, how I would go about graphing, uh, you know, a couple periods of this just to show that I can, uh, I know what's happening. I would do it very, uh, very similar to what we did for sine and cosine. All right, the first thing I look at is the period, two pi over b, but b is just one, so I've got period two pi, um, which means my interval width is going to be pi over two. And let's incorporate the phase shift. So I've got x minus three pi over four. Normally I'd start at zero and go to two pi if I just wanted to graph one period, but I'm shifting to the right three pi over four. So three pi over four, if I'm solving for x here, uh, 11 pi over four. And I'm just gonna create my little table here. So three pi over four is the first angle I'm gonna plot. And then um, adding pi over two, which is just two pi over four, I'll get five pi over four, seven pi over four, just adding pi over two or two pi over four. Okay, so again, when I input these for X, I should be evaluating cosecant at the quadrantal angles. So let's, I just find it helpful, or I find that students find it helpful to first do the sine of all these. Remember, 
we're thinking the sine of the quadrantal angles ultimately when we plug in these values for x. So I've got 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0 as my outputs. Now doing the cosecant of this. I got undefined, one, undefined, negative one, undefined. And then following the order of operations, I'm gonna multiply that ratio by negative one half. So negative one half times everything. Undefined, of course, remains undefined. It's gonna be an asymptote. Negative one half, undefined, one half, undefined. And the last bit is to the vertical shift is up one. So I'm gonna add one. So undefined, uh, adding one here will be a half. Undefined, I'll get to three halves. Undefined. Okay, so just be careful when um, we go to uh, draw my angles here. So I know three pi over four is my starting point of my table, but I'm just gonna go back across zero just so I have um, some angles there. So if I subtract the interval width of pi over two or two pi over four, that gives me pi over four. So I've got pi over four. And if I subtract pi over two again from that, that gets me negative pi over four. So that's helpful to me because this right here between negative pi over and pi over four is my interval width. So I'm gonna make sure I'm, I properly do three pi over four. Got five pi over four, seven pi over four, nine pi over four, and maybe I'll go back a little here. Negative three pi over four and negative, whoops, negative five pi over four. Okay, so um, I know I'm undefined at three pi over four, and it's also helpful to note that every other um, angle I'm dealing with, I'm having an asymptote here, so undefined. So I'm gonna do my asymptotes first. All right, and then at pi over four, oh, I'm also gonna put in my vertical shift. My vertical shift is up one. So I'm gonna say this is one. You don't have to do this, I just like to draw kind of a dotted line for my midline. Um, it just helps me make sure my graph visually looks accurate, but no need to do that. Um, okay, so at five pi over four, I'm at a half. So five pi over four, I'm a half. And nine pi over four, I'm actually at three halves. So I'm at one and a half. So we're looking like this. Go, remember, we're going away from the, the midline with these graphs. And so that means at, if I'm extending it to another period, that means at pi over four, I'm gonna be up at three halves, so up here. And then at, um, at negative three pi over four, I'll be at a half. So there's two periods of the graph, gives you an idea of what it looks at. So it was just that graph shifted um, to the right three pi over four the graph of cosecant at x and 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 multiply by negative <laughs> multiply by negative one half and shift it up one. Okay, let's do number nine and then um, and then we'll call it quits with this video. All right, so nine. All right, we're going to find both a sine and cosine function here. So first, let's deal with the um, amplitude. So I've got my high value of five minus my low value of negative three. So minus negative three over two. So the amplitude is four. And that will help me get my, um, my vertical shift, which is at one. So this is good. I've got a point on the midline. And whoops. And um, OK, so vertical shift up one. So from this high point, here that I've given you, oops, didn't want to cover that up, to the midline, that's going to be a fourth of the period. Okay, so a fourth of the period, let's find what that distance is, 39 eighths minus 27 eighths, it's going to be 12 eighths or three halves. 
Okay, so if that's a fourth of a period, multiplying by four to get a single period. So a period is then going to be that times four, which is six. All right, and so the interval width between you know the critical angles that I'm plotting is six over four or three halves. Okay, which actually I already knew. Um, all right, so let's let's pick. Oh. I know what I needed to do. And so my B value is two pi over the period. So pi over three. And maybe I'll do a cosine graph. So I'll look at this point here. So with a cosine graph, if I just had the period change and no phase shift, it would start a pi on the Y axis. So that means in order to get the graph that I have here, I'm shifting it to the right 27 eighths. All right, so let's incorporate that. So I've got y equals, uh, the what was the vertical shift? One, so one plus four cosine. And I've got the b value of pi over three and x minus 27 eighths. Now, I have a point on the midline already, so I could find a sine function just using that point here. And But remember sine, if there was no, um, if it was just the period change, sine normally would start on the midline and go up. Well, here I notice it's starting on the midline and going down. So I want to think of an, if that's the case, I want to think of a negative in front of um, the amplitude. So let's do that. So we've got y equals one minus four sine pi over three, and then shifted to the right 39 eighths. Now, because I know the interval width, um, I also could find, because I know the period and thus know the interval width, I could also find this point here. And so, and how I would do that is I would just from 27 eighths subtract that interval with three halves or um, subtract 12 eighths, same thing as three halves. And I would get this point to be 15 eighths comma one. And so if I wanted to use that point as my reference, then my sine function would be one plus, cause it's starting at that point and going up four sine pi over three x minus 15 eighths. And as I've said previously, feel free to distract you, you know, incorporate that phase shift. You are more than welcome to multiply pi over three, distribute it through, or you can, I'm happy if you just leave it like this too. Okay, so that is it um, for this video.